Hello and welcome back to CST 2120. So in this lecture I'm going to cover web services. So we're going to start with just uh, explaining what a web service is. Then I'm going to talk about how you can test web services. And finally I'm going to talk about how they fit into coursework too. Okay, so the idea behind a web service is that a server, you know, somewhere in the world, listens on a port, typically a, a port number 80 or 8080. Then the client sends an HTTP request, you know, uh, using a method like GET or POST or whatever, to store and retrieve data to or from the server. And these web services are designed for computer programs, not for people. I'll, tr I'll try and clarify that in a little bit. And the data that's exchanged with the web service is typically in JSON format, although older ones might use XML. So this is a little example of a IEX trading web service, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, run by a commercial company. So let's just talk through the sort of basic components of this, and then we can sort of unwrap that in a little bit more detail. Yeah. So first we've got the URL at the top of the browser, but obviously any kind of client that's communicating with this web service would still have to use the same URL. Um, and this is, in this case, using the HTTPS protocol. Don't worry about that for, you know, this, this module. We're only going to focus on HTTP, not the, like, the secure version of HTTP. Then we've got the domain and the subdomain. Domain is iextraining.com. The subdomain is API in this case, because the API, I guess. Then if you remember the last lecture on uh, URLs, we kind of got the path on, the, on that domain, which in this case is it's got a version of the API, and then it's got like stock and batch or whatever. And finally, and then we've got within the URL, we've got the query parameters, which are, which are these kind of key value pairs separated by uh, like equals, like type equals quote. And they, the query parameters start with a question mark. And these are used to kind of fine tune the data that comes from the web service. And finally, we've got the actual data that's returned by the web service, in this case being displayed in the browser. This is in JSON format. So the first thing to get clear is the difference between websites and web services. You know, websites are designed for people. So we use the HTTP protocol, which is originally designed for like websites, right, for HTML data. Um, and for websites, what we're doing is we're using HTTP to retrieve HTML documents as well as CSS styling, fi styling files, well, images, and so on and so forth. And the idea is to create an attractive interface that can be used by people. And the, con and the difference here is that web services, on the other hand, are used to exchange data between computer programs. Yeah, and I'll give a few examples of that, yeah? And so because we're exchanging data between co uh, computer programs, web service data is usually in a computer-friendly format like JSON or XML. This is a website, you know, homepage of The Guardian. You know, it looks pretty, got pictures, you know, everything's nicely laid out with CSS. Whereas a web service is, you know, it has a fairly complicated URL, and then a, a, a sort of bunch of data that, you know, human computer scientists can understand, but your average human isn't interested in trying to process or read. Web services are often used to provide data for the front end of a website. Now, I teach web scraping in my third year module, and so we have to sort of engage with the way in which uh, websites are built. And a decent proportion of websites these days uh, work in this way that I'm just describing, yeah? So the idea is, you, the, what happens is the browser, you load a sort of very, fairly simple HTML page into the browser, and this HTML page has a bunch of JavaScript in it. And then the JavaScript running in the browser uses HTTP to get the data from the web service. Yeah, so, you know, Gmail would be a classic example, but a lot of shopping websites as well, you know, work in this way now, yeah? And then once the JavaScript in the browser has got the data from the web service in JSON format, you can load it in using conventional kind of JavaScript, which is what we're doing in this module. But, you know, as you sort of advance on your web development journey, you might choose to use a framework like Vue or React, which can simplify this process of loading data from a web service into the front end of a website. So this is the sort of older model um, of, you know, how the data gets into the front end. So you've got the database and the server's talking to the database. The client sends a GET request to the server. The server communicates to the database wraps the data from the database in HTML and sends that HTML um, back to the back to the client. Yeah, that's a sort of fairly classic model. You know, many, many, many websites built with PHP working exactly this way. And then this is the sort of more modern sort of approach for building websites. Um, 
And here we have a sort of web service also running on a server that talks to the database. The client sends a get request to the web service, but instead of getting HTML formatted data, it gets back JSON formatted data. And then that JSON formatted data is then loaded into the page, either just by, you know, wrapping it in JavaScript using string processing, which is what you guys are going to do, or using Vue or React or Angular or one of these things, yeah? Web services also play are also a way in which companies can sort of make their data available to, to other people who want to use it, right? So they, they'll expose their data through these kind of web services, typically provide some quite complicated documentation explaining what the different paths mean and what the query parameters are for their web service. They'll often use uh, versioning, if you remember the example I used earlier, I had like 1.0, so that they that way they can expose they can update their web service, but then preserve, still preserve the earlier paths, so for legacy support. Um, most modern uh, web services are provided uh, in data in JSON format, but sometimes company will give options there. And usually you have to sign up for like a free, for an API key, sometimes you have to pay for it, sometimes the web service is completely free, it just depends on the purpose that they're, that they're being used for, yeah? So, you know, and a, these are these, they change every year, so some of these links are probably out of date, but one that's typically is by my third year students, so, you know, is like the football data one. So then you can like ping the web service and get data about, you know, the different leagues and, you know, the results of different matches and so on and so forth. There's ones that give you traffic, other ones that give you web uh, weather information, uh, crypto data and so on and so forth, yeah. You can also uh, extract, there's also web services providing text data. You know, like, a, you know, news API, you know, what used to be the Twitter API, now it's probably called X or something. I think they're now thinking about releasing an API or, you know, they've changed everything anyway. Facebook Graph, I'm not even sure that still exists, but the, the point I'm making really is that there's lots and lots of different web services out there that are provided by third parties, and you can then ping these web services and get data uh, and put it into your page or, you know, use it in whichever way you want, yeah? So there's a sort of directory of web APIs. It's worth a flick, um, though it's sometimes out of date, yeah? Now within cloud computing, um, uh, web services play a pivotal role. Yeah, so Amazon Web Services, again, which I teach in the third year, um, is basically a series of different web services that do different things. And then your the, your job of building a kind of cloud web app, cloud, the sort of back end of a web application, is kind of stitching together these different web services. So you you'll have like DynamoDB, for example, as a database in the cloud, and you'll, and you'll kind of call that with a bit of JSON to store or retrieve data, and then return the data in JSON format. And then there'll be another web service, for example, to uh, analyze, you know, the emotional tone, whether people are saying good things or bad things in a piece of text. And you ping the web service with your text and you get back, you know, whether it's good or bad or in negative or neutral kind of thing. And there's other web services for converting images into text and so on and so forth. Yeah, lots and lots of different web services. And then a big cloud application will be talking to these different web services to, to use their different functionality. Now, sort of, as you come to sort of develop your knowledge of web services, you'll come to understand, you'll come across this pattern called a RESTful web service. I'm not going to go into the full details. Again, I sort of go into more details in the third year. Um, but this is kind of a way of designing web services that, in, uh, that uses HTTP to kind of create access and change resources on a server. So I'm not going to go into all the sort of technical details, but just to show you an example. So we might have a path that, like, uh, this, so it's, it's a web, so, RESTful web service is a combination of the paths and the HTTP methods here. So we're here we might have, a, this is just an example, but here the path is like serials. And so if we send a GET request to serials, then we'll get all of the serials in JSON format. Whereas if we send a GET request to serial slash 2, it'll return data about the serial that has the ID 2, again in JSON format. And uh, we can then use a query string to like, you know, do pagination, this kind of stuff. Um, and the similar thing works with post. If we send post to serials, it'll create a new serial with the data that we're sending in the message body. Or we can actually send a post with a particular ID, and then in theory, it'll create a, a, new, a new serial with that specific ID. Similar thing with put, um, except, you know, there's the difference between this is not impotent and this is impotent, if you remember my previous lecture. And similar idea with the delete, we can use the delete method to delete a serial that has the ID of eight, or in theory, delete all serials, although obviously that's a bit of a risky method, yeah? So you don't have to worry too much about that here, but it's something to be aware of because you'll see a lot of jobs that are asking for RESTful web service understanding and design and this kind of stuff. So I think I hopefully explain roughly what a web service is. Now I want to talk about how we can test uh, our web services, yeah? 
So as you remember from uh, the HTTP lecture, we can test GET requests by typing the URL in the browser, which sends a GET request to the server. We can also write JavaScript running in the browser. It's a method called AJAX to talk to, to the server. We can also use third-party testing tools, which we're going to come to in a bit. And there's HTTP client li libraries in most pr pretty much all programming languages. Um, so Axios is the one I tend to use in JavaScript running on Node. Yeah? Post and put request, um, we need a form in the browser to be able to send that uh, to the server, so that's a little bit inconvenient. As In the same way we can do uh, use AJAX, use JavaScript running in the browser to send a, a put or post request, and uh, also third-party testing tools and HTTP client libraries. So I think it's clear that you can easily test GET requests by typing a URL in the browser, and I often do that, but we can't test that test uh, put and post in that way without messing around with a form or running JavaScript in the browser. It's much easier, you'll find, to use a proper tool for testing web services. There's quite a few out there. Um, I, I flicked through a few of them. Postman's the classic, right? Uh, but there's SOAP UI, Insomnia, and probably a few more if you have a little bit of a dig, yeah? So uh, Postman's the one I know. It's one of the more popular ones. Um, but if you really want to use a different one, you're welcome to use, you know, SOAP UI. As long as it does what Postman does, I don't really care what tool you use, yeah? So this is a screenshot of Postman. So I thought I'd do, I think I've demoed it in the lecture on coursework too, but I'm going to do another demo just to kind of refresh things. So what I've got here is a little web service running in Node. And then here's my Postman client. Um, so what I can do is create a new request, and then I can type a, you know, I've got a, this, so this is, the, so here I've got a path called users. If I send a get request to users, I send that, and uh, in theory, if it's running, uh, why hasn't that worked? Yes, it has worked. And then here I've got the what's returning from the users. I haven't got any users. But then what I can also do is then send a post request, again, to users. In this case, I can put uh, some data in the body. Uh, if I put that raw JSON format, take a look, you know, uh, and if I can send uh, in JSON format, so I've got lights here. I'm just trying to type this thing without knocking the lights over. So if I do name, I know, uh, I'm just going to do a really simple one. Uh, I know, uh, Bob, for example. So if I send, this is JSON formatted data, and I'm using post to send this data here to, to users. So if I send that, I get the message back, user has added successfully. And then using get, I can send another get request, and now it's giving me that it's, it's stored the name Bob in there. And if I send the name, you know, just save myself, messing up my thing, if I send bow2 or something, then it adds another user, send a get request, and now I've got two users in my array, yeah? So you can see it's really easy using a tool like Postman to interact with my web services, because it's totally set up for that, right? I can put things in the body, I can change the parameters, if I wanted to, I can mess around with the headers. It's a completely flexible way of talking to a web service, which is much, much easier and better to use than just typing the URL in the browser and putting forms in the browser. So that's why I'm asking you to test your web services and demonstrate the functionality of your web services using a tool like Postman. Okay, so finally I want to just quickly talk about how web services fit into Coursework 2. You should have some idea of that already by watching Coursework 2 video, I hope. Um, and I hope there, but you know, just to reinforce it, uh, I want to make it very clear that the web service is the back end of the social networking website that you're building for Coursework 2. So I put it into two stages to make it easier for you to learn about these technologies. So the first stage is a basic web service that really is just a matter of showing that you can use get and post and build a very simple web service using Node and Express. So that's really just to, sh to get you sort of on the path to building the more sophisticated one. And so, so that's the basic web service. And then the final web service will support all of the functionality of your social networking web website. Yeah? So the idea in the final submission is that JavaScript running on the front end will send data to this web service and load data from the web service into the page. So we're going to be using exactly this kind of more modern architecture for web websites where we've got the client sends get request or post or put or whatever to the web service. It gets back data in JSON format, JSON format and loads it into the page. So, so for the basic one, all I'm asking is that some data gets sent to the web to the server using post, and then get some data is returned in, in using get, and that, that this data somewhere or other contains some information about yourself. So you must have your name, student ID, and student email address. Yeah. So that's just to prove that you can do it. Yeah. Well, this that's just a, a warm up or a teaching a teaching tool, if you like. The re what really matters is the final submission where you're extending that very basic web service into something that allows supports registration functionality, login functionality, uh, things like you know being able to upload text contents, images, um, searching, and you know following um, 
and, uh, and more advanced functionality. Yeah, so obviously this is the real complicated, interesting stuff. This is just a sort of initial test, just to make sure you understand the technology. Yeah? So you're going to be building a fairly sophisticated web service to support all of this uh, social networking functionality. And when you built both the basic web service and the final web service, you must use Postman or a similar tool to test and document your web service. Yeah, so it takes screenshots showing the URL and the data center and retrieve. So just refresh from what I said in the course like two video. So here's my sort of screenshot Postman. And you can see here I'm sending, I've got the URL and the HTTP method. I've got the data that I'm being sending to the server here in JSON format. And I'm showing you um, the data that's being sent back from the server. Yeah. In this case, breaking my rule about JSON formatted data, but you know, uh, so I might lose a mark or two for this if this is my submission. Okay, so hopefully that's introduced you sufficiently, you know, well to web services. There's obviously lots of material online about how they work, and so the key difference is that websites just use HTTP to display data to humans. So you've already built, you know, one website for course at one. You're going to build another website for course at one, and that that website will then be pulling data from a web service um, and loading it into the page. And web services are using HTTP to exchange data between computer programs, and that's why they're using formats like JSON and XML. For Coursework 2, you're going to build two web services, a basic web service for the, sec for, for the second submission, the first submission is just a proposal, and then an advanced web service supporting social networking functionality for the final submission. And it's very important that you document your web services using Postman or a similar tool, or firstly because we won't be able to mark it properly, and secondly because you know that's part of the requirements for this for this uh, for that coursework. Yeah? And that's it.